out my uh, welcome to everyone to Ian's, and you may be seated at this time. We'll be, we will be standing in a minute, but it's it's good to uh, notice that it's our contemporary service, and that what that means is there's a uh, a small set of music on the front end with our band and. Um, what we do is we try to, to worship God and draw close to God through the musical praise, which we do every week here, of course, but to have a little bit longer period of time at the beginning of the service. So that's uh, what's different in part about our service. We certainly welcome the Guy family and the baptismal service as well today. So a few, uh, a few special things going on all at once today. And our little ones are here with us, and that's good. And uh, we'll... Uh, We'll go through well in the service, uh, regardless of uh, uh, volume. And uh, thank you for to all the parents and young parents who uh, do their best every week here. We're great. It's good to have you in every case. So if you'd stand back up again, we will start with the everlasting God. Um, and if you take out your insert, you'll actually have words to the music and follow along as best as we can. And I'm sure Gordon and Brian will help us follow the right words at the right time. If you need to sit down at any time, just sit down, it's okay. You don't have to stand up the whole time. Okay?
worshiping God and remembering God and the Almighty, the indescribable, and that's what this song is about.
word together or a time not just for me to pray at the front, but of course for each of you to draw close to God, to uh, be aware of uh, what's going on in your relationship with the Lord, to, to be opening yourself uh, as we continually go through the service more and more to God. And so as we come to our prayers of approach, we're remembering who God is. Confession, being honest with God about our own sin and rebellion. Uh, the assurance of pardon, and then the Lord's Prayer with the words debts and debtors. So with these things in mind, let us pray. The Lord, we come to you, the living one, the one who knows us inside and out, the one who made the stars, who understands and set the galaxies in place, the hundreds of millions of light years of space flow from you and your creative power. And Lord, it is indescribable what we see when we, in our imaginations, try to go there. When we see pictures from the, the telescopes, from the satellites, it's amazing. And we are humbled in your presence as we come to know you anew as we acknowledge again that you know us, you know our planet, you know our woes, you know our island, you know our families, and you know us, you know me. Thank you, Lord. And we recognize in ourselves that there are many things not going in your direction, many ideas, attitudes, actions, inactions, because of our brokenness, because of our rebellion towards you, because we often don't consciously think of you. And so we confess our sins to you, Lord, and take a few moments to do so together. We ask you for the courage to be honest, that we might express to you in our minds those thoughts and words, deeds, and things undone against your will and way. We confess our sins to the Lord. Forgive us, Lord, where we choose to go other places than to you for our strength, our hope, our major decisions in our lives. Forgive us, Lord, where we are unkind and impatient with one another. We trust you, Lord, for meeting us in this time together. We thank you that your disciples asked what it meant to pray. And so we say the Lord's Prayer together, again using the words debts and debtors, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, boys and girls, it's your time, so if you'd uh, come forward at this time, we'll have a, a little talk and prayer.
deck arrives. Good to have you guys. How's everybody doing? Doing okay? Yeah? School going? Yeah? And uh, anything you're looking forward to? No. Yeah. Okay. Well, just in case you can go out and, and get candy this week, um, which I, you know, I'm not against candy and I'm not against dressing up, but I just encourage you not to celebrate evil. That's my one word of, a, word of wisdom to you for this time. Now, we have a special thing happening today. Does anybody know what it is? Happens here now and then. Halloween. And that's not it. I just said that one. A good, good guess. It's a piece of furniture that's been moved. Did you notice that? Adults? Does anybody know? <laughs> baptism. Boys and girls, you know what baptism is? Do you? Anybody want to tell me? Because I usually tell you. Going once, going twice. Well, what do we use when we're doing baptism? Anybody know what, what we use for baptism? Go ahead. Um, hands. Hands, yes, we definitely use hands. It's a, it's a digital ministry. That's right. Okay, anybody else? Lots of right answers. Water. Yes, we use water. We do use water. And it's a way that we welcome people into the church, right? We welcome the little ones into our church. We say, you're part of the family until you say otherwise. It's by grace that we say that you're here, and we uh, encourage our friends to profess their faith publicly. So that's what we're doing again today. So you have the best seat here in the house, just at the front. And I'm just going to go and get my book, which I forgot, which has all the right words in it. And hopefully is where I remember it is. Look up. Look way up. Oh, no, that's not that one. Thank you. Thank you very much. That, that was just to show Brian's abilities off. Okay, so, boys and girls, you can maybe go that way, and I'll get a little more space over here. And one of the things that I do is um, find the right page. Usually I have a, a little uh, music, music stand as well. But is there an extra music stand up there, friends? Uh, thanks so much uh, for helping me out. Appreciate it. I, are we, yeah, maybe. We'll see. It's a little heavier music. Friends, we... Um, and I don't know if I'm going to feed back here now. Is that a, cause could you uh, make sure that I don't feed back from the two systems? Sorry, just in case. Just a few things going on today, as you can notice. Um, let, uh, first, a little teaching on baptism. Baptism is a gift from God with visible signs and words of promise. God moves towards us to claim us as children of the new covenant and members of the household of God. In baptism, God acts, us, acts to unite us to Christ and deliver us from the power of sin and death and calls us into new life and growth of service. In the sacrament of baptism, the church recognizes God's covenant of grace. We receive God's gift with reverent joy and respond to faith and obedience. Remember the words of Peter on the day of, bap- of uh, Pentecost. Rem- repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so your sins may be forgiven. You'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promises for you, for your children, for all who are far away, for everyone who the Lord our God calls. Obeying the command of Jesus Christ and believing in his promises, the church baptizes those whom our Lord our God calls. God acts for us in baptism as God has acted for our salvation from the beginning of time. As we stand before the waters of baptism, we hear again the words spoken to the Israelites as they stood before the waters of the sea. Do not be afraid. Stand firm and see the deliverance of the Lord. He will accomplish it for you this day. The Lord will fight for you, and you only have to be still. The Lord commanded Moses, tell the people of Israel to go forward. 
Stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the people of Israel may go into the sea on dry ground. Through the waters of baptism, we go forward with Christ, with death from death to new life. We move on a firm foundation of dry ground that is none other than the faithfulness of God, whose loving mercy endures forever. So let us take courage. Promises of God are for us and for our children. Let us move forward through the waters, trusting the faithfulness of God, secure in the love made known in Jesus Christ, confident that the Holy Spirit is acting now to free us from sin and death, to lead us to a new life of love and service, in union with Jesus Christ, in whom we become heirs of the covenant. So I invite you to come forward now, Brad and Danielle. And I didn't tell the congregation, but there is a big fat, fat bulletin here. Uh, and inside there you will see the baptismal service. Sorry for not reminding you of that. There, there is that right here, right now. You'll need that because you have a part as well. Maybe I'll get you to come over, stand next to Ian over there. He has a little part too. He's our elder on duty today. So I ask the question then, who comes to receive the gift of baptism? On behalf of St. David's session, I would like to present Danielle and Brad Guy, who are bringing their child to baptism. And... Um, uh, then I'd ask you, uh, Danielle and Brad, do you desire that uh, Thomas be baptized? If so, say, I do. And then some of the uh, promises that we talked about when we met in your home. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, who has been faithful to us in all generations. Do you turn away from sin, renounce all evil powers in the world which rebel against God, or oppose God's rule of justice and love? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin which separate you from the love of God? If so, say, I renounce them. Do you turn to Jesus Christ, accepting him as Lord and Savior, trusting in his grace and love? If so, say, I do. Do you desire dependence on the Holy Spirit to mature as a Christian in the church? Seek the guidance of Christ as you listen to his word, to celebrate his death and life at the table he provides, and to engage in his mission to the world? If so, say, I do. Do you promise to raise Thomas in the love and knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ within the home and the fellowship of the church? If so, say, I do. The congregation would stand at this time. And we know that there are uh, people who are here at this church today who are maybe members of the church somewhere uh, out there. And so you are welcome to participate in this. But certainly our own congregation is urged if you see there in your service, there is the question before you. Do you, as members of the Church of Jesus Christ, promise to guide and nurture, by word and deed, with love and in prayer, encouraging him to follow the way of Christ and to be a faithful member of the Church? If so, say, we do. And let's continue to stand, and we will profess the Apostles' Creed as it's in a question, of, a question and answer form there in your bulletin insert. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Congregation may be seated. 
We give you thanks, O gracious God, for the gift of your spirit and the sign of water. In the beginning, when your spirit moved over the waters, you gave order on life to your planet Earth. By the waters of the flood, you cleansed the world and established with Noah and his family a new beginning for all people. In the time of Moses, you led your people out of slavery through the waters of the sea, making covenant with them in a new land. In the fullness of time, you sent Jesus Christ, who was formed in the water of a woman's womb. In the water of Jordan, Jesus was baptized and anointed by your Holy Spirit. Gracious God, by the gift of water and your Holy Spirit, you sustain all life. Almighty God, by the power of your Holy Spirit, by the sign of this water, you cleanse from sin through the death of Jesus Christ, those who receive the sacrament. You raise them to new life through his resurrection. You graft them into his body, the church. Pour out your Spirit upon this, your child, that he may have power to do your will and continue forever as a servant of Christ, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forevermore. Amen. comes the fun part. Here you go, buddy. Come on up. Sorry about that. You have to check where your microphone is better next time. Thomas Ross, right? I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. God bless you and direct you now and always. Amen. Well, friends, you know, we usually sing a song right now, and I usually turn to my musician to say, what is that song? Maybe Gord remembers. Brian, do you? The Aaronic Blessing, yes. Aaron, not irony. We're we're not celebrating irony. We're we're doing the... uh, You don't like it over there, do you? Sorry about that, buddy. Okay, we're going to go for a little walk while you sing. Start us out. What's the number? 619. 619, if you would like to. Let's stand to sing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord you and be gracious.
help him to love you. Help us to, to know you. This day and always. In Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, boys and girls, that's... Child of Blessing. Well, let's sing that. Could have done that while they were still here, but uh, 521. reading is from Joel 2, 23 through 32, and that's found on page 1362 in your pew Bibles. O children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain the early and the later rain as before. The threshing floors shall be full of grain, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will repay you for the years that the swarming locust has eaten, the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent against you. You shall eat in plenty and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, and that I, the Lord, am your God, and there is no other. And my people shall never again be put to shame. Then afterwards, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Uh, Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall be visions, shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days, I shall pour out my spirit. 
I will sure show portents in the heavens and on the earth, blood and fire and columns of smoke. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord, Lord comes. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. The second reading is from Timothy. Second Timothy. And it can be found on page 1775, the year of the founding of our church. Uh, 4, 6 through 8, and 16 through 18. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day, and not only to me, but, all to, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed, and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Continuing uh, in the Holy Scriptures, I'd encourage you to take up your pew Bible. We'll read responsibly from Psalm 65, which is found on page 860. It starts on 860 in the pew Bible. read the first verse and you the next and so on throughout the psalm. Praise await you, O God, our God in Zion. To you our vows will be fulfilled. When we were overwhelmed by sins, you forgave our transgressions. We are filled with a good You answer us with awesome and righteous deeds, God our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas. Who still the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. You care for the land and water it. You enrich it abundantly. The streams of God are filled with water to provide the people with grain. For so you have ordained it. You crown the year with your bounty. And your carts overflow with abundance. The meadows are covered with flocks and the valleys are mantled with grain. They shout for joy and sing. The gospel reading is from uh, St. Luke. And chapter 18, we're continuing there in chapter 18. And verses uh, 9 to 14. If you'd like to read along, it starts on 1561.
to some who are confident of their own righteousness and look down on everyone else. Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. Pharisee stood by himself and prayed, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man rather than the other, went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Amen, and may God help us to understand this in our own lives. Well, it's Reformation Sunday on top of all the other things that are happening today. And uh, Mighty Fortress is Our God is Luther's great hymn. We're going to sing that right now. 315, 315.
so, Lord, we trust you with our lives anew this day. Whether we're here for the first time or whether we've been here many years, we need to meet with you. We need to hear from you. And so we look for that opportunity now and trust you for the rest of our day the rest of our week and the rest of our lives through Jesus Christ we pray Amen Well as usual there's a lot that we read in the scriptures and that last uh, reading was perhaps one of the shortest and simplest but I want to just say that today it gives us both a warning and an, inv- and an invitation but and that warning and invitation is uh, in terms of how we come to worship First of all, though, before that warning and the invitation, let me congratulate you for coming to worship. I say that uh, sincerely because uh, more and more our society denigrates, I think, the public gatherings of Christians. All of us across the city, there's about 50 or 55 congregations just here in this city. And we bring traditional and contemporary forms of worship, including musical praise and prayers, confession of sins, public reading of scripture, preaching and teaching on that scripture, the giving of tithes and offerings, and showing gratitude to God while praying for ourselves and for others. It takes commitment, and it takes a breaking of whatever other tradition you have on Sunday morning that you might want to follow to come here to this church building and to be in this church once a week, and we're grateful to all those who do, and we believe there's a blessing in so doing. The warning Jesus gives us is not to be like those who might come to church who think they are better than than anyone else, consequently trusting in themselves and thinking that they are good enough without God, while perhaps saying the opposite. As we all know, religion can lead to a holier-than-thou attitude, I'm better than you, but not the faith that Jesus Christ encourages us to follow. Jesus told a story about two guys that went to worship. One told God how good he was and how generous he was. The other came looking for mercy, weighed down by his sins. In short, Jesus encourages everyone to practice the confession of sins as the way to God. And that just means being honor, just being transparent before God and honest and not remaining ignorant about our sins, or worse, telling God how good we are. Because it does take courage to reflect on our own acts of rebellion toward God, our own brokenness, our own ways of going away from God or against God. I find it much easier to tell you how I was sinned against, and I can tell you about how my father was an alcoholic, or my mother an enabler of his alcoholism, or how my brothers abused me, but... And I've told you bits and pieces of that over the years. And I can tell you about what was done to me, and that's, I won't say call it easy, but it's easier, it takes less courage than it does to tell you how I've been hard to live with. How I've been angry and anxious and impatient, highly competitive at sports and games, and other sins that I can talk to you about. And I've told you some of these things over the years. And when we come together into this place, we all know that we come with baggage. And we come to confess our sins and to worship God. It's not a simple act. God gives us what we need to admit who we are, to ask for mercy, to become more like what God wants us to be, a blessing to others and a reflection of Jesus Christ being ambassadors of the faith. But of course, as soon as we think about this, we ask ourselves, who is equal to such a task? Paul asks us that in 2 Corinthians 2. None of us, as we realize the weight of our sins and the strong undercurrent of our rebellion against God, even as we try to follow the Lord in a number of areas in our lives. Yet God, in fact, makes us his representatives as we choose to be in relationship with Jesus Christ, as Daniel and Brad have publicly professed today. And here's the irony of the gospel. God uses broken people like me and you to bring others into wholeness 
broken people to bring others into wholeness as they choose to acknowledge their rebellion against God and choose to follow God anew this day, thereby bringing them into the wholeness of that new relationship with God. And God uses you. Don't ever doubt that. God uses me. This is not because we're so good, but because God bases his work on grace. And all of us who want to be used can be used. At times in the church, such is completely missed. The church thinks that we can gain our relationship by, with God by being good enough, or by giving enough money, or by some personal sacrifice. But the only sacrifice that matters is what Jesus has already done for us on the cross. And his gift of life is what Jesus invites us anew to consider today. 500 years ago, a man named Martin Luther uh, lived as a priest, a monk, and a scholar. He saw that the church had begun to sell indulgences, salvation, and that works became the only way to know God. In 1517, he publicly displayed his 95 reasons that the church needed to be reformed. The Protestant Reformation occurred, and the center of the Christian faith became again an act of grace, rooted only in the scriptures and received only by faith. Grace alone, scripture alone, faith alone were the rallying cries of the day. And Martin Luther, of course, was only one man. Many others preceded him and followed him. Today we believe, and I think many Roman Catholics believe, that our faith and trust in Jesus Christ as a personal relationship, as the gift of God based on the witness of the Holy Scriptures, is the central message of the Christian faith. In fact, um, I had supper with the Archbishop um, uh, Martin uh, uh, just two, uh, not yesterday, but Saturday before, and he was telling me, you know, what we what we really need in our church is for uh, young families, old families in between families, everyone to come to personal faith in Jesus Christ. That's what we need in the Roman Catholic Church. And I was uh, greatly encouraged. So let's turn back then to Luke 18 just for a minute. Jesus tells us to be honest with God about our faults and sins, not to cover them up or to devalue them in, in, in any way. Because when we are real about our faults and sins, we realize together how much we need the Lord. We realize together how much we need to be changed, but cannot change ourselves. We realize how much we lack as parents, for instance, but that God can make us competent in such an important role. It all begins with our coming to God in the place of worship. It continues with the openness and honesty before God to say that I need help, we need help, and I do. It continues with the desire to be courageous enough to face who I really am, faults and gifts to the point where I am humbled by the fact that I am loved even though I don't deserve it or have a right to it but back to what Jesus was saying he knew that the Pharisee that is the clergyman of the day if you will had some good things going in his life he knew that it wasn't that he was wicked through and through but what disqualified him for worship was that he came thinking that he already knew it all and didn't need to receive anything And even if we think we don't know it all, but don't come to receive, that still disqualifies us today. If we come into a church building or any other building where we are about to engage in worship and seek to honor God, if we come thinking we already know, or worse, thinking we know better than God or Jesus, then we will not learn anything, nor will we experience what we need to receive, because our arms are folded in God's presence. This does not mean we cannot thank God, for the good things happening in our lives or that we cannot be grateful when we see worse things happening to others we can be grateful but the main thing is to be open to receive from the Lord and then that takes courage to be aware of how God will address our blind spots our sins and our rebellion and of course as I've said often if you are not aware of what God wants to address in your lives muster the courage to ask someone close to you who knows you and ask them and they certainly, hopefully, have the courage to respond and address what they think your needs are. Because God does not want us to stay in the position of being so weighted down by our sins or so full of shame that we cannot hear what God wants us to do. God wants us to be open to naming our sins and to be open to God's changing us so that we no longer are the ones who feel the weight and the burden of our sins, but rather have the weight of them shouldered by Jesus. As the scripture says, come to me, 
all you who are labor and are heavy burdened, then I will give you rest for your souls. Then we have the courage to ask forgiveness of others where we have wronged them, and the humility to ask whether they forgive us or not. But I encourage you to start wherever you are. Don't try to be too advanced, no matter how advanced you feel you are in your field at work, because this is spiritual work, and the key is to simply acknowledge where you are wrong, needy, and weak. For those who exalt themselves, Jesus says, will be humbled in the final judgment. And those who humble themselves will be exalted in the end. This is the turnabout natural justice for all those who seem to be able to find everyone else's fault except their own. When you come to church, or indeed any place of learning, don't sharpen your elbow for the person sitting next to you. Ask for the courage to look in the mirror and the humility to do something about it. Let us pray. So, Lord, we come again to you, the one who knows us. We cannot play games with you because you know and see through all the things that we do and are see through to our hearts. And so we bless you, thank you. Give us what we need to see our lives as you see them, to receive your love and your mercy anew this day. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We uh, take up our offering at this time. The ushers would come forward. We give to God our gifts, tithes, and offerings.
and some love. Help us as we help others. Give us what we need as we give ourselves to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Simply again, meeting with God, saying thank you to God. That's what uh, prayers of thanksgiving mean, of course. And then intercession. And uh, intercession time is meant for each one of us to bring before God those in our lives who need help. Whatever kind of help it is, whether it's medical or spiritual or emotional or otherwise. And I particularly like prayers for uh, my brother Chris in California. He's uh, had some, some bad infection and has had to go for surgery. And uh, he's not been well, so uh, thank you for uh, praying for him. And, uh, and we'll continue to pray for those we have been praying for. But we encourage you to use the space in these prayers to pray for those in your lives. So with this in mind, let us pray. And Lord, we begin just by saying thank you. Thank you for the family we have, friends. Thank you for the little ones in our lives. Whether they be here today or whether they're thousands of miles away, we bless you, we give you thanks. Thank you for our health, strength that we have, the choice that we have to be here today in ourselves and politically. Thank you. We thank you for those who are sitting with us and in front of us and behind us, on our left and on our right. Bless them, help them to know you, to love you, to choose your way on this your day. Lord, we know that not only these need prayer, but um, those who you bring to our minds week by week, We pray for those with medical needs. I pray for my brother Chris, for your mercy on his life, for uh, the blood and all the parts of him returning to normal so that he can walk and take up his life as he knew it before, trusting you anew. Pray for Tonya. Continue to pray for her health and uh, all that she needs in these days thanking you for your mercy on her. And Lord, we take a quiet moment to pray for others now. Whoever you direct us to pray for, we quietly pray for them. for mercy on our levels of government for those in authority over us or prime minister and government and opposition parties for our premier and cabinet and those who govern us here and for all those who are governing uh, at the local level as well have mercy we pray as we seek to honor you Find your way, have space to do what you ask us to do and be. Give them all a sense of their accountability to you first and foremost. Lord, we give you back our church. We trust you for uh, the elders who lead here, for your mercy on them and their families, for all of us who seek to be good parents 
whether we have children who are very young or who are very old, everything, everyone in between. We trust you, Lord, and we thank you for our time together today. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn is a worship song, and it's mighty to save, and it's again in the insert. Um, Penny, come on, come on up, Penny. We'll let Penny have words. I, I cut Penny out of our service, sorry about okay. that. There's a, just a minute of mission, so. Thank you. Uh, on Thanksgiving Sunday, Stephen Bruno delighted us uh, the congregation with a PowerPoint presentation on Five for Sudan. And that's just like your hand there. It's a project which began in earnest in 2013, this year. So five meaning fostering independence and village education for South Sudan. We do know for sure that if, they have, if any of us have the opportunity for education as a child and all throughout life, it opens up all kinds of possibilities independence, free thinking, uh, to chart a course through life. And it's the one thing that no one can take away from us. My father used to quote that quite often, that line, when I was complaining about studying or doing homework instead of being out on my bike. So the first school in Dendor has begun. Perhaps the first of many if we dare to um, greatly, well, if we care to dare greatly, I guess, John's wife, Nal Yal, who may or may not join me here, <laughs> she thought she might, saw the pictures of the children when John came back from uh, South Sudan, all in uniform, with books in hand, learning in that little, little village. And that village, of course, and the school there is still without walls for the school, proper latrines, a school lunch program, all the things they'd like to have, and many other immediate needs. But she wanted to help. So now Yal thought, well, what can I do, right? Yes. Mother of four, super, super organized, and I won't know one thing that now Yal can do. She can cook. And you cook a lot. Yes. <laughs> so she had this idea of teaching us some Sudanese cuisine. We have sampled this many times, and it became part of our Thanksgiving dinner this year, and was very, very tasty. And there was a few people here at that dinner, and I'm sure they can attest to that. Now, Yal and a couple of her friends would like to show us how to cook Sudanese style, perhaps on a Saturday afternoon or a weeknight. And from these, maybe we can host some dinners for Dendor maybe in our own homes, or perhaps a large dinner here at St. David's. The possibilities are endless. So if you would learn how to, like to learn how to produce these delicious foods uniquely from Sudan, I've got, um, this is very old now, recipe cards here. So the recipe cards we're going to put down in the narthex there with pen. And if you're interested, just write your name, your address, uh, phone number, email, and we'll get in touch with you. We'll also have them just through at coffee time there. Now, Yal and I will have them. So if you've got any questions or would like to know anything about it, I think it would be great if we could start this. Um, what else is I going to tell you now? I'd like to say it's probably, this is an equal opportunities project too. I know in South Sudan, probably John, your wife, would not cook, right? <laughs> but we know here in St. John's, North America, we all cook, right? Men and women, we all cook. So this, that's what I mean by equal opportunities. Um, so maybe just in closing, I don't know if you can, if you would like to say anything now, Yal, about this. Um, there's the mic. Thank you, Penny. Um, I'm not going to say anything. All Penny said, they're all the same, and I just want to let you know, guys. I really want to help, but that's the way I want to help, so I can help. I can uh, 
you can I can teach you how to cook uh, Sudanese food and we can rest this way so I just want to say thank you and I really really want to do this way so thank you <laughs> that's my first time to stand up too so thank you I really want all of you I can teach you how to cook Sudanese food thank you thank you for standing up <laughs> So maybe just in closing, um, the scripture, 1 John 3, verses 17 to 18. But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? Children, let us not love in word and talk, but in deed and in truth. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Appreciate it. Uh, we'll have our closing song now. We'll stand to sing, and it's in your uh, insert there, Mighty to Save.
hope you all are, know that you're welcome to our coffee hour down this way. Let's receive the benediction, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the friendship and fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.